Welcome, everybody, to the PHDJ podcast. My name is Mike. Yes, sir. Joe Bunn here. That is Joe Bunn you hear on the other end. Yes, How are you, Joe? I'm good. Good morning. Well, you good? We always, <laughs> we always say we're not good. Morning, morning, afternoon, evening. It doesn't matter. People listen at all hours of the day. I, I think our listeners know by now that we record in the morning. God, so I've done that three a, shows straight. I, that's why I'm usually sipping a cup of coffee, and B, that's why we often make the mistake and say good morning. So did you have a big announcement last night about the— uh... No, it's tonight. It's tonight. Oh, okay. So you're—oh, that's right. Yeah. So. I see. I always think <laughs> yeah, no. we record on Wednesday. So tonight. So by the time people listen to this, it will have been last night. Yes. Where the, where can our listeners catch that if they didn't catch it live? Uh, yeah. Th- uh, it's still at the closed Facebook group until the launch. And that's www.thedjsvaultgroup.com. The the actual site when it goes live will just be the DJ's vault. But uh, if you're not in the closed pre-launch group, get in there. Very cool. Get in there and, and yes, uh, all so from Joe. Yes, sir. So, Joe, we want to talk about music uh, today, and I'm going to kind of take a, an, a, an, an obtuse way of mm-hmm. getting there. Mm-hmm. Do you know Marie Kondo? Have you heard of her? Yeah, I, I have. Who is that again? She's the tidying up lady. She um, she wrote a book a number of years ago. I, I think I have the name correct. Marie Kondo. Yeah. Um, she wrote a book a number of years ago called Tidying Up. And the only reason I had ever heard of that was Howard Stern was a big fan. Okay. And he had read the book, and he talked about her. And um, and it's it's your typical home makeover where every episode she goes into somebody oh, else's yeah, yeah, house yeah. or apartment and helps them make some sense out of their clutter, if you will. And mm-hmm. I, I think clutter is a not to get off on too much of a tangent, but I think clutter is a uniquely American thing. I think we accumulate too many you know, possessions and, and, and I don't know how many other countries have, um, storage units. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. think about what a storage unit is. You have so much crap Dude. that you can't even keep it in your house, but you don't want to get rid of it. So you're going to pay somebody a hundred bucks a month for basically an extra garage. It's, it's, a, it's yeah. I mean, it's Are silly. Are they building them like crazy around y'all? Uh, everywhere. Yes. It's a, a every, ca- can it you seems imagine like, the money that those places make? Yeah. I mean, think about it. All you need is the real estate. That's Most it. of them, it's the owner lives on the property. So he's his own or he or she or they are their own security. Um, I it's mean, it seems like a bill. boring They expense. put them up in two months. Yep. I mean, it, it, and dude. by the way, there's a sales uh, thing to be learned. If you've ever rented a storage unit, Whatever size you want, there's always one left. Hmm. Oh, I've, I, I've I've never I haven't in years because Kelly and I have a, a rather large house, so sure. we our storage unit is here. But I remember for a while when I was jumping from apartment to apartment and things like that, there were a number of times where, I, and we've also used them for business at times. Like we have so much gear, we need to. If you want a ten by ten, I guarantee there's one left. <laughs> if you want a ten by twenty, I guarantee there's one left. Like they actually and it's, say, I there's just one left. They go, what, what do you want a ten by ten refrigerated? <laughs> Oh, there's one left. You know what I mean? And I guarantee there's 15 of them, but it's how, how else are you going to create urgency? You know what I mean? Genius. If you tell me there's 15, then I know I can go <laughs> home and think about it. But so anyway, tangent, tangent, yeah, tangent. Yeah. So, um, on a personal note, Kelly and I had begun purging and, and, and clearing. And right. uh, the whole point that she says is look at something, ask yourself, does it bring you or does it uh, spark joy? Anymore? That's right. That's what yeah. I think. Yeah. And if it doesn't, thank it, because yeah. at some point you purchased it, so it probably did. But now it's time to get rid of it. And I did it recently with shoes. I wound up getting rid of 30 pairs of shoes that I hadn't worn in forever. Yesterday I did T-shirts. I plan on doing button downs, you know, soon, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I, so I put up a post yesterday about it. And uh, somebody named I think his name is Michael Troy or Troy Michael. Uh, yeah, that but, sounds but, right. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I put up a post. I put a, I showed a picture of my um, uh, drawer, and I said she she also teaches you how to fold your clothes, which is ingenious because I've always stacked t-shirts. Yeah. The problem with stacking t-shirts, you only see what's on top. That's right. So if you take a look at my Facebook page from yesterday, uh-huh. she teaches you how to fold clothes so that basically you can see now every t-shirt that's in your drawer. Uh-huh. Which I'm like. I can't believe I never thought to do this. Um, But so I put up a picture and KC had a very funny um, comment. He said, do you mean folded? But but then Troy Michael wrote, if Marie was a DJ, I wonder how her music would be organized. Oh, wow. Which I think is an excellent point. And I know you and I have talked about organization of music and crates and everything else. So so I don't want to be too redundant here. But first and foremost, Joe, 
if there's a song or songs on your hard drive that you haven't played in forever, are you inclined to delete it? Or are you the type of person who... So let me hold on to it just in case I get a request for it sometime. So, Mike, you cut out just – so you said, are you the type of person to delete it? Well, we might have to fix this in the post. Okay. Edit. Are you the type of person who would delete it um, even if there's no – even if – like I have a terabyte hard drive on yeah. my computer, and I've got about 400 gigs free. So when I delete music, it has nothing to do with freeing up space. But from time to time, if I see a song and I'm like, I've never played this song, I don't even know what it is, I might just delete it off my hard drive. Now, there are some people who would say, why would you do that right. if space isn't an issue? How do you feel about that topic? I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm a deleter. And, okay. But I, I did a massive Marie Kondo purge. Sorry, I was trying to find that post of yours. Uh, about a year ago when I switched from one laptop to another, I have always done – the I think they call it a migration in the Apple world, where it literally will copy this picture I have on my desktop to that every single thing, yeah, right? Thing. Right. And I said I'm not going to do that this time. I don't, you know, it, there's some bad stuff in here. I'm sure there's tons of music that was my personal collection that now everything that I listen to, Mike, is on Spotify, and. So I basically went through all those albums that I loved and I, you know, clicked uh, save in Spotify. So I had all those already cataloged. And then I just went through and started taking that stuff out. And then before I did, I didn't do the migration. I basically just started making playlists, you know. Okay. And, and so you sort of did it when you moved did, computers. Right. Okay. Yeah. So right. I did a major purge. I mean, I dropped uh, over 100 gigs of music. Okay. Right. And have you had a situation where you got a request at a wedding and you were like, God, I used to have that song with me, but now I don't. Yes, but it's been it's cost me ten dollars over the past right. year. Right. You know. And, you know, at the collective, which I, I yeah. you know, I, I love that week at the collective. Yeah. D Dave Lander, who I don't think I knew very well at all before that week. I yeah. got to know him that week. And I think he's phenomenal. Yeah, he's great. Incredible DJ. Great personality. Ridiculous. He you know, he said that he I'm pretty sure it was him that said, yeah, man, just delete it off your hard drive. What's the worst thing that's going to happen is you might have to repurchase that song down the road. But hey, how often is that ever going to happen? Like you said, it's probably cost you 10 bucks. Yeah. But just the peace of mind of knowing that you can filter through your music. Yep. And not that they're all bangers, but right. they're all relevant in some form or another. It kind of goes back to the days you and I both started with vinyl. Mm -hmm. But even if you only started 15 years ago as a DJ and so your first format was CDs, mm -hmm. there was still at that point a space issue. You know, whatever CD case you had, at some point you filled it up and then you got a couple new CDs. And at some point you had to go through your CDs and go, what, what am I pulling out of here? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing with one terabyte hard drives or two terabyte, you may never have that issue, especially if you're not keeping video. Yep. But but to what end do we hold on to all that music? And I, I, I think whether you want to delete music like that or not, the one thing you, we can all agree on is our playlists mm -hmm. need to be streamlined. Oh, 100%. And, and that's something, you know, we I think our first show of the year, you went through what are there what are the things we can do now during our slow time? Mm -hmm. And I think we both touched on that. Whether you want to clean up your hard drive musically or not, I think this is a great time to clean up your playlist. Those party playlists, whether you have one big playlist or I know I've talked about it on on air. I have an early night party playlist and also for some reason I keep hip hop in a separate playlist. But so I've got a hip hop playlist. But you know, again, I want just bangers in there. I, I want just, you know, songs that I know. And so if I've got a song in any of those three playlists that, man, last year I never played it, then I've pulled that out because that tell that shows me it shouldn't be in my heavy rotation. Blurred Lines, I think, is a perfect example. You and I both said we've pulled that out, right? Yeah. That's no now longer have, in actually. my. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's no longer in my party playlist. Now, every once in a while, I still get a request it. for it. No, I wouldn't. Right. No, no, no. Okay. God, I wouldn't. Okay. But I've deleted it out of my party playlist because right. I don't want to see it uh, in that regular, what do I have, like 300 songs in that, in that folder. Rotation. Yeah. Another tip that I've done with those folders is, you know, the fields that aren't even on the screen, like the album yeah. or genre, you don't even see them. Yep. What I've done is I've taken the bangers that are in that playlist, like the top 20, and I've put an asterisk in one of those 
field, so I don't even see it. Okay. But what I but so what will happen is late in the night, if I'm in that party playlist, if I just type an asterisk in the search, sure. In that, then it just gives me those twenty. Yeah, you, and, can, you know you can colorize them too, though, right? Yeah, I don't. I I, I like one. I, I I know you can do that, but I and, and I've just chosen to do it that way. Right. It's simple. Same I've principle. actually done that with a number. This same principle. Yeah. I've done that with a number of different things. Like I've got some Motown remixes in that, so I've added the numbers six six zero S. So if I'm in that playlist, let's say I get a request for "Ain't Too Proud to Beg" and it packs the dance floor, mm -hmm. I can now filter within my party playlist. I can just put sixties up there, and now I'm going to get my fifteen oh, right, Motown. Right. So I'm not sifting through, going, "Where's my next Motown one?" Right. It just it streams it. So that's another kind of, you know, hack, if you will, right. to. Um, yeah, if even if you colorize them, you would still have to remember what color did I make those sixties. Like, and you still have to scroll down. No, because you could just hit the top of that column and it, oh, it okay, it and it color. filters by color, right? Right. right. But you would so have you to go have to... like the blue ones are, right? Like, you know. Yeah, and I just find typing into that, sir. I've done it with sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties. I think I've even done it with the aughts to two thousand. So a shortened. If, yeah, if I'm in that the, genre, yeah. I've already got my party playlist. Now yeah. I'm going to condense that party playlist even more. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. So while we're on the subject of music, yeah. uh, you and I have not discussed R. <laughs> Kelly yet. Did you see the documentary? I, d I have not Surviving. seen the documentary. Okay. Have you? It's on. Yes, I saw it on it's Life. On, uh, I Lifetime. believe it's on Lifetime, which, by the way, if you have Lifetime on your cable or on your satellite dish, Lifetime has a great app. I didn't feel like sitting down and watching it on TV. Yeah. So I downloaded the app. I registered through my direct TV yeah. and I. I basically watched it on my phone for like oh, wow. a day and a half. It is disgusting. It's right. haunting. Uh, I mean, I don't have children and it still made me sick for anyone who has children, especially if you have daughters, I can't imagine how you wouldn't be revolted by it. Wow. Uh, that does it, yeah. I mean, does it prove anything because right. he was found innocent in a court of law? Right. I guess not. And I understand. I sent you an article by I Brian. Did. I read it. You have yeah. a chance to read it. I did. I was actually kind of surprised. Brian kind of almost gives R. Kelly a pass. I, I saw that. I, he, I, you know, what I mean, I, I thought I thought Brian was a little bit took it easy on him. Yeah. Uh, I I had definitely a, and it, did he say he didn't see the? Um, he said he didn't watch it either. Didn't, right. Yeah. Maybe if he watched it, he might feel differently. Right. right. So, what have you done with R. Kelly? I, I'll be honest with you, man. Since, and I mean that musically. That no, was no, an odd question. I, well, what have you done musically with R. Kelly? Well, f I, I'll say this first and foremost, and, and this is – I'm going to try and make the story as short as possible. In the history of my life, I've had so many different chapters that R. Kelly and I have history. Like, this is a crazy-ass story. So I managed an artist when I lived in Wilmington named Mike Waggett, and Mike Waggett – was a white R&B singer in the time of pre-Timberlake. With great initials, by the way. Yes, M.W., exactly. Mike Waggett could sing, uh, and he was white, and he sang R&B. And Mike Waggett had a gift for getting backstage at shows and getting to the artist that was performing and singing to them. This happened with Stevie Wonder. It happened with Montel Jordan. It happened with R. Kelly. And he by the way, that's how Boys to Men got their break. Exactly. Yeah, Thank they you. they snuck backstage. They were, uh, uh, Bill Devo, or, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So, so Mike Waggett gets to R. Kelly at some show, and this would have been mid '90s. Uh, R. Kelly was probably at his height of fame. You know, I, I think that I can't remember the year of I believe I can fly, but. He right. gets to R. Kelly, and literally, you know, they exchange numbers. And then I come into the picture several years later. He still is working or talking to R. Kelly, Montel Jordan. He's trying to get signed, and he has no money. And then I have money, and I step in as a manager. And I send Mike on multiple trips to Chicago. And I think that my money is being spent to record records. Mm -hmm. When in turn, Mike Waggett is also a very funny person. I think that he was basically just being flown there and hanging out in the studio as kind of like the court jester. Right. And I figured this out after about two weeks of hotels and per diem and bring him home. And I'm and like, no demos. And no, you're like, can I hear the record. demo? You're like, no. He's not, but he's got a Batman logo in his pool. I'm like, I don't give a shit about his pool, man. Like, where's right. the record? Fast forward uh, many years later, I've moved to, to Raleigh, uh, North Carolina. 
And R. Kelly is coming to play the amphitheater, 25,000 people. So, again, this is pre-any controversy. R. Kelly's still riding high. The show is delayed, and the MC, who's like a stand-up comedian, um, basically asks for volunteers to come up and sing a cappella verses of R. Kelly tracks. Wow. 25,000 people. It, me, my wife, and Mike Waggett, because Mike had gotten us tickets to the show and passes. So we're sitting maybe third or fourth row, and I look to my right, and I'm like, oh, shit, Mike's gone. And I look up, and he's in line. He's in line to sing. Now, right. 99% African-American audience, he's a white dude, and he doesn't look cool. Like, he's like, <laughs> and goes to a couple people. The la- I mean, everybody's laughing at people. That guy can't sing. This girl can't sing. I'm sweating. I'm like, oh, my God, Mike's up next. Mike's up next. He even took the mic on the third girl that tried to sing I Believe I Can Fly and bopped her in the head with it. <gasps> yes. So I'm, I'm, Ainsley and I are like, oh, geez. So Mike takes the mic from him, and he does um, the Bump and Grind remix a cappella, and he does one verse, and the guy goes, stop. Get on stage. And, dude, Mike Waggett in front of 25,000 people did wow. the entire song a cappella. So into the thing, the guy, oh, and he called him Eminem. He goes, damn, Eminem, you're going to want to meet R-, R. Kelly. And Mike reaches in his back pocket and holds up his backstage pass. I already know him, bitch. <laughs> I mean, dude, when I'm telling you the stadium, went, like, he got mobbed after this. So wow. we go, we meet R. Kelly, and he was a cool guy. Now, fast forward to now. Long story, sorry, but it, it had relevance. I have not played Ignition Remix, which I used as one of my final songs in many, many, many parties, weddings, private events, corporate events, since that documentary came out. Okay. Not once. So uh, did you have any other that, that did you have any other um songs in your pl- in your party playlist? Uh for, for his? R? No. Yeah. I, I had Step in the Name of Love. Oh, and shit. You're right. Happy people. Yeah. You're right. Because they were I Chicago. had Step in the Name of Love and Ignition in my party playlist. I guess my hip-hop playlist. You're and right. I, 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 I've deleted both of those. Now, not off my hard drive. Right. They're still in my hard drive. Right. Same thing with I Believe I Can Fly. Sure. And it, but it, So at this point, I wouldn't go to those songs. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't work them in mm-hmm. based on my own judgment. Mm-hmm. If I got a request for them at an event, it That's would what I depend. If it would depend on who requested. Okay. Bride and groom, definitely. I wouldn't even look twice. I'd go. You got it. Yep. Somebody important, bridal party member, sure. parents, something like that. I would say, probably say to them, "Are you sure?" Mm-hmm. In other words, like it. I don't know if you've ever played blackjack, but mm-hmm. if you play blackjack in a casino and you you ask for the wrong card, most dealers would go, "Yeah." Really? Yeah, right, right. Like, they'll give or you the a person second. beside you. Will, right, right. Yeah. They, they'll give you a second to think about it. Like, if you want to split your kings, yeah, yeah. they'll go, oh, oh really? <laughs> you know, they're not going to say no. And I, so I want to give the same, uh, really? Yeah. But if they said, yeah, this, this group is going to love it, I probably would still play it. Yeah. But if it's some, just some random person at the party, I would probably treat the request like I do any request that I don't think is going to work. I'd probably give them my very basic, hey, let me see if I can work it in and then not get to it. Mm. Because, you know, my reason for avoiding it is, listen, more people than we're aware have suffered childhood trauma, molestation, abuse, Mm. whatever. Mm. And right now for... Those people and others, that's what hearing an R. Kelly song is going to trigger. It's going to trigger those memories. It's going to trigger those thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather avoid that at a party Mm -hmm. if I can. And again, if the bride wants to hear Step in the Name of Love, thumbs up. You got it. I'm not even going to give her that. Really? I'm not even going to make the thing. But, you know, if it's just some random dude at, you know, at table 12, let me see if I can work it in. But I'm not. I'm not playing it. Right. Not how about you? He, um, I, I think I'm the exact same. I think the um, I think I am giving that kind of pause and that really, you know, and hoping that they kept up with current affairs, you know, that they know about this documentary. Um, but you'd again, have to have lived under a, a pop culture rock 
True. To, and, and listen, some people do. Some people are completely immune to pop culture. They don't look at anything. They don't. But I mean, it, you know, that's not your typical millennial party goer. Yep. The typical person who would ask for R. Kelly mm-hmm. should be aware. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, like my gr- my parents probably don't know about the documentary. That's what nor, I was going to say. Nor would they ask about R. Kelly at a wedding. You know, what I mean? so I think anyone who would ask for it has got to be somewhat aware. Yeah, that man. might they, they might take the attitude like Brian Bonacici of, you know what, lots of artists have done bad things and yep. and who are we to judge. But uh, I don't think anyone who's asking for R. Kelly is also unaware of the news, current events. Have you ever been asked or, or questioned any other artist, you know, a Chris Brown or a Michael Jackson or anything like that? I definitely put Chris Brown away after the the incident with Rihanna. Yeah. And to be honest with you, still, I mean, I thought Forever was going to be a, you know, for forever hit. I mean, I thought that was a great dance song, great message for a wedding, everything else. Mm-hmm. But I've, that's not in my party playlist, even though I still think it's a great dance song from the era. Yeah. Because I just, I personally would rather not play songs by somebody who is a known spouse. I know they weren't married, but yeah. a, a known abuser. Mm-hmm. Um, the Michael Jackson situation, it, I remember the day the trial was ending for him, mm-hmm. pre-internet or maybe internet was just yeah. whatever, but we got word that they were coming down with the verdict, and I remember we were in our old office, mm-hmm. somebody had a radio, and we turned the radio mm-hmm. on, so we all huddled around, and Chris Monaco at the time said, you realize this is going to determine whether we can ever play Michael Jackson music again or not. That's actually now, I, and, yeah. and I was like, wow, man, that's that's probably true if he had been found guilty Mm -hmm. and he had died in jail which let's face it might have happened if he had been found guilty because he died an early death and who knows um i don't know if we would ever have gone back to playing michael jackson i don't know Mm. i really don't i have Um, have had a wedding in recent history uh, maybe less than two years ago where i was specifically told no michael jackson because there was a man there that had been a child Oh, wow. I'm and trying to say, by him? Allegedly, allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. I mean, listen, I, I see Michael Jackson from time to time on my do not play list. Not often, but yeah. maybe two, three times a year. I don't yeah. question it. I don't say, it. oh, is right. it because you've, you know, yeah. but I mean, it could be. I mean, some people might just not like him as an artist, sure. but it could also just be somebody who believes the allegations, mm-hmm. doesn't want to hear his music, doesn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. So who knows? But I, I did, I, I know I kind of temporarily put him on the shelf, if you will, back then. Yeah. But once he was found not guilty, that kind of came off. And, you know, to me, it won't make a difference whether I play R. Kelly ever again or not. That's not going to affect my parties. Michael Jackson would be a bit of a loss. I mean, yeah. I played Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. I played Billie Jean, too. Uh, too. Beat It. There's me a too. number of his songs, you know, want to be starting something that me I too. play on a yeah. regular enough basis that, I mean, I'm not saying I could never throw a good party again, yeah. but taking a couple bullets out of my gun yeah same here man yeah. so so i guess circling back then are you uh, uh, you know when this when this hot topic cools down on this whole r kelly thing <clears throat> even if it's not requested you know let's say nine twelve months from now six months from now are you apt to pull ignition remix put it back into a playlist yeah i probably not joe because it was never a banger for me it was never like it sounds like you played it way more often than i did yeah so i guess you're more relevant to answer that question yeah um damn you think you'll go back to ending let's say he's never brought to trial now and this only is what it is now it's suspicion that comes from a documentary right you know, listen, his record label dropped him. So yeah. obviously he's in the midst of the worst part. But let's say a year from now, a record label picks him back up. He puts out a new album, whatever. And bygones are bygones, if you will. I know it's a horrible saying for something so serious. Mm-hmm. But do you think you're apt to say, yeah, you know what? It's still a great song. Maybe I'll start ending parties with it again. Man, I I, I don't think I can. I, I don't think. I, I think I number one. I think I need to watch this documentary. I mean, I know it's going to be one sided, but I really want to see where you know how depraved this is, and I think that it would. I think it would shudder me to the point, especially as a parent. You know, um, I don't have daughters, but 
you know, a parent is a parent. And if you're, and if you're disgusted by it, you know, as a dog parent, then I'm going to be really disgusted by it. Yeah. Listen, I mean, I'd like to think that something like this, you don't have to have a direct yeah, connection. Right. You don't have to be a parent. You don't have to have daughters or had past to, abuse. You know, I, I, I respect women enough yeah. that anyone who treats women like that. And listen, the, the abuse that he heaped on his wife, mm-hmm. again, if you can believe her side of the story, she sure. was she was an adult at the time. So her situation was not child abuse or, you know. whatever statutory rape but if you watch the documentary look at how she the things that she claimed he did to her to me those are just it's wrong it's wrong to treat a woman that way okay so i I mean i i don't think i would bring it i put it back into the rotation okay i really don't um i'm I'm not saying i'll I'll never play it again chris brown i it's not like i've never played forever again I have, but yeah. only by request. It's yeah. not a song that's in my playlist. It's not a song that I go out of my way. Right. It's not a song that I go, oh, you know what would fit good here? Forever. It, it, the only time I ever play it is if it's on the bride and groom's request list or if somebody at a party asks for it and uh, and I feel like I – get into I, that yeah three times? That yay? Yeah, no. Nah, yeah. I was never a big fan of that song anyway. I don't know. That, that worked well for me. Okay. Although I did get my hands – I think it was going back to Dave Lander, mm-hmm. um, a transition mix from yeah – Usher into oh, that. Right. And that I played a couple of times just because right. I do like I'm I'm starting to get into transition mixes a little bit more because I, I understand yeah. the power of them yep. to jump from you know here to here. One twenty eight. I, I got my hands on a um footloose one that goes from eighty seven BPMs to one hundred and seventy yeah, where it is. Super fast, yeah. And I mean what a great way to take a hip hop set up here in what instantly was the, the short end of, or the low tempo in there. It starts out at 87 oh, and oh, basically double. I gotcha. I it gotcha. goes double time, but it okay. doesn't naturally I gotcha. um, in the course of a 16 beats, I think it, it picks up. And I, So it's a great way to, if you're in a hip hop set yeah. and you want to jump immediately rather than yeah. go all right, I, right, I need right. songs to get up. Easily on. five songs, right. Yeah, um, it's a great way to do it. So I, I did, it's funny you asked about Yeah three times because I was never a fan of that. Right. But after getting my hands on that transition mix, and again, I think it was Dave who, who gave it to me, mm-hmm. uh, I've used it, yeah, probably half a dozen times mm-hmm. since then. I'll check that out. I think it's funny I forgot that. that that was Chris Brown. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think he sent that to me as well. Well, anything else, Mike, before we put a, yeah. put a I think that's good. We're thing. closing on a half hour. So Let, uh, excited to your your uh, announcement and um god last yeah. one uh last thing did you happen to watch the grammys uh, somebody asked me if we're yeah, i did i watched it. most of it i yeah. i was i i was out sunday night so i was an hour late starting it okay. and so i watched the, the last three hours and then i went back the next day and watched the beginning okay so i watched I it, watch it out of order, yeah. but um, yeah what did you think uh, best, just, best performance um hmm Man, I don't. I just was underwhelmed. I guess I don't know. What? Who did you like? Well, For my somebody, favorite album here last year was Janelle Monae. I know, so you, I remember I was you already kind of biased, but I thought her performance was amazing. It was sick. It was. I also thought talk about the simplicity of music. Alicia Keys just sitting there. Yeah, first of all, nuts. two pianos at once. I I don't know if that maybe a piano player will tell me that's easy to do, right. but that looked amazing yeah. and just to, to hear i said to kelly during that she could tour with that oh. she could do a tour just her and a piano playing cover versions 100% uh, I, I would go to that it's it was, it's almost it was, like uh, she's so good at she was so good and so natural at it it almost would be like all right who's got something somebody could be like uh, billy joel piano man uh right. you know just yeah, randomly yeah. throw out something Right. Um, so I, that was two were the perform and yes, I am. I'm, I think I'm almost always underwhelmed by the yeah, Grammys, yeah, yeah. but I also always watch it. Yeah, and I know you and I, did you do your no, annual I news? I didn't do it. You this didn't year. get this the first up. time in five or six years. Right. I hadn't been on the news, uh, but you watched it anyway. Sure. It amazes me people <laughs> in the industry who don't watch it and almost, uh, not, you know, don't watch it maybe cause they had a gig or they're something, like, but they're defiant. Being yeah, defiantly don't watch it. Like, screw that. And I'm like, wait a minute. It is music's biggest night. Right. We make money in the music industry. Why Why would you not at least at least it. record it and watch it the next day and fast forward through some shit? Sure. I mean, J-Lo's perform- Motown performance I thought was impressive. The Dolly Parton thing was impressive. Yep. Diana Ross was impressive. It was great to see Dolly her Parton after. Dolly Parton is 73. I mean, I mean it's yeah, unreal. Yeah, and Diana Ross is what, 75? Yeah. And I mean that you know those are these are significant people that we still play at our events. That yeah the the whole 
I'm not going to watch that crap. I don't know. It just it blows me away. But uh, I, I will. I did just remember one that I thought was really good. And I'm not a country fan, as you know, but that Dan and Shay that they did that song. Sitting, oh, yeah. smash that yeah. song. Yeah. Great song. Yeah. All right. It's a cool song. Yeah. They're good cool point. Guys. I had to bring up the uh, Grammys. Anything, Mike, you got a plug? Anybody? If you don't have the book. Oh, good. Still, we still have room for a PhDJ workshop. Sure do. Joe and I are taking bets about whether we get one or two more chairs to <laughs> fill or not. So uh, so prove one. I'm not going to tell you who bet no and who bet yes. So prove one of us wrong and, uh, and, and be the 14th or 15th, I think, attendee to squeeze in. I think yeah. we're at that. Rock and roll. We'll see you all on Mobile Beat soon. Have a great week. All right. Later.